Leagues are go. The 19th A-League men's competition. This could save it. Wouldn't you know? Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. The fairy tale is complete. The Central Coast Mariners, champions of Australia. Hello, I'm James Dodd, and welcome to the Isuzu Ute A League Highlights Show. Round 20 saw the Isuzu Ute A League launch its Pride celebration, and we kick things off at Combank Stadium, where Western Sydney Wanderers played Western United. Having lost the Sydney derby last time out, the Wanderers were looking to bounce back at home against the league's bottom side. Furthermore, defeat in round 19 left the Wanderers sat in sixth place and nervously looking over their shoulder at the teams behind them. Unfortunately for Western United, finals is out of the equation this season. However, a third victory in five matches for the team sat bottom of the ladder would see them reduce the gap to 11th place down to just a point. Your commentary team for this one is Andy Harper and Robbie Thompson. This does not feel like a team that has nothing to play for. Both John Aloisi and Hayden Fox here on the touchline, up and about, having a word with the fourth official, questioning that handball call earlier, and a few of the fouls. There is plenty of spice already in this game. And perhaps an opportunity for Lockie Brook as well. Well, he's already got three this season against Western United. And he almost had number four there. Here he is again. Beedling can't foul, that's a great pass for Lockie Wales, squares it, oh, and just a toe from Marcelo to deny Ruse and Danzaki behind him. Milanovic, little one-two, it's nicely worked, Milanovic, oh, what a goal! Fantastic finish from the Oli Roo. His seventh of the season, a wonderful strike and deserved of breaking the deadlock here at Combank. They've really struggled to threaten the goal otherwise. And just ball in, well that was a threat. Hitting the post and driven back in off the line by Milanovic. Well just moments after he scored a stunning opener, he saves his side at the other end. Ball from Aldi for Garuccio. Good save, Margouche. As he palms it out wide, and Lockie Wales manages just to keep it alive. But Thurgate, ooh, Risden blocks it back into the danger zone. Great ball over the top, Grimaldi! And he scored, and the equaliser does arrive. Just a minute after they had one great chance, the Wanderers failed to heed the warning. And Western United are back on level terms. And Daniel Pena will put a goal on for you. You just got to finish it off. This time. Oh, was here's Pena on the left foot. He drills it into the bottom corner. Fantastic finish from Daniel Pena. And they have come from behind. And now they find themselves in front. Look at that, Brisbane who will have played a match more than Western Sydney for a little bit longer, but could, could draw level with a win. Oh, as Pena releases Rukovitsia. Oh, cool finish. With 10 minutes left to play, Nikita Rukovitsia has added goal number three. And Daniel Pena is the orchestra conductor once again. Western United avenging their 5-0 loss at the hands of the Wanderers earlier this season to not only boost their chances of avoiding the wooden spoon, but also dent Western Sydney's chances of a top four finish. The first of three games on Saturday saw Melbourne City play tabletop as Wellington Phoenix. Following Western Sydney's defeat on Friday night, Melbourne City knew a win over Wellington would move them to within two points of the Wanderers and that all-important last finals position. However, City are winless in their last five matches, and they face a Wellington side brimming with confidence, sat on top of the league and unbeaten in their last nine games. Your match commentators at Amy Park are Phil Moss and Simon Hill. And reset through Steven Ugarkovic again. Talbot. Near post, there's a chance for Leo Nattel and fired over by Tolga Aslan. 
And it was a good little sequence there by Melbourne City. Leon Natal good use of the body. And the cross is a bad either and Max Caputo. That is an extraordinary point blank save by Alex Paulson to keep him and City out. Talbot. Little short ball from Nuno Reyes. Clever ball from Arslan. Flicked through by Jugarkovic. Caputo held up by Paulson. Wellington hanging on a bit and that's why off the boot of Jakulic. Credit to Alex Paulson who was out smartly to smother that effort. Fernandez's cross headed purposefully away by Wooten. And here's Costa Barbarousas on the move for the Knicks. Bojidar Krajev is trying to get up to give him an option in the middle. Here is Bojidar Krajev. Angle wasn't really there. Ben Old! Oh, and that's a fine fingertip save, is it? By Jamie Young. I thought he got a touch on that. Lengthy conference going on between Fernandez and uh, Arslan. Now they're not happy with uh, how far Barbarousas is away from the ball. Arslan. And back post! Easy as you like for Samuel Suprian to give Melbourne City the lead. Just shy of the hour mark, it's his first goal in City Blue, and how important could that be for Aurelio Vidmar's side? Shorter goes, this is how uh, the goal came about. This time, Phoenix perhaps wise to it. Clipped centrally by Arslan, headed down by Naboot, and Antonis will launch it towards Suprayan. And uh, Alex Paulson came but didn't get there. And it needs that goal line clearance by Finn Sermon, I think, to keep it at 1 0. <laughs> Dug out by Alte. And Cry of the perfect weight on the ball. Barbarousas! Oh, we should have made it 1 1. A guilt hedged opportunity. And at one of his favourite grounds, Costa Barbarousas fluffs his lines. So Samuel Suprayon's first ever A-League goal handing Melbourne City a vital victory at Amy Park, with the result meaning Wellington could find themselves knocked off top spot come the end of the round. Next up, it's the original rivalry as Adelaide United faced off against Melbourne Victory at Cooper's Stadium. The Reds are in free fall, having picked up just one point from their last six games, leaving them in 10th on the ladder, and a failure to win this clash at Cooper Stadium would see them equal an unwanted club record of six home matches without a win. As for victory, Tony Popovich's men came into the game having lost their last two, however they would return to third spot on the ladder with a win against their old rivals. Your match commentators for the original rivalry are Andy Harper and Robbie Thompson. Last touch from Salimi. Here is Salim Khalifi with Mashash. First chance for victory. Mashash so dangerous in those situations. He tried to just chip the ball over the advancing Delianov. It's deflected over the crossbar. Comes inside. Oh, lovely play. Valupale. Fantastic stop, Delianov. Bornaroli keeps it alive. And blocked by Bovelina. Lovely football and great goalkeeping. Well, the good and the bad of Dishan Valupale, the, the way he let that ball road roll to open the space was mag magic, really. Oh, that is beautiful play. Early season goal scoring touch, but have unfortunately consistently been conceding goals. Here's space again for Mashash, Valupale on the left. It's a lovely ball for Valupale on his left foot. The save and Fornaroli passes the ball into the empty net. Goal number 14 for Bruno who shows he hasn't forgotten where the back of the net is. And victory's bright start to the 64th original rivalry finally has something to show for it. So not only has a young Australian daughter now at home, having been born here last week, Iren Kunda, let's fly! Oh! Nestor Iren Kunda! Well, that's what he can provide. Well, he can strike a football, and he was a long way out. 
but you just knew as soon as he was winding up it could cause his own problems. Wow, and the Harvey Norman replay here in Kunda just lights the fuse on the dynamite. The loop play still, here's Fornaroli. And now the follow-up. Appeals for a handball, penalty given. The ball bouncing around. It's Bruno versus Delianov. And he goes low and hard to the bottom left-hand corner. And just as Irin Kunda celebrated in front of the victory supporters, Bruno does likewise. And victory back in front. His cross is brilliant for Clark. Oh, and he should have scored. What an opportunity for Zach Clark. And he knows it. Oh, as they've cut them open here, Falami. Falami only on the field, a matter of seconds. Brilliantly denied again by Delianov. Boss for Arzani. And the shot off the underside of the bar. Bruno looking to the linesman to see if it crossed. Play on. Still looking for that perfect delivery. Back post this time. The header from Bobolino. Well, that's how close the margins are that we're talking about. A double from Bruno Fornaroli sees him return to top spot in the Golden Boot race as victory move into third position, while Adelaide sink down to second bottom on the ladder, having now lost four in a row. Join us after the break as we bring you another three games from the Isuzu Ute A-League, including late, late drama between Perth Glory and Newcastle Jets. Welcome back to the Isuzu Ute A-League Highlight Show. Saturday's action concluded at HBF Park where Perth Glory hosted Newcastle Jets. Defeat last time out brought an end to Perth's six-game unbeaten streak, a run which has seen them climb up the ladder largely down to the goal-scoring antics of Adam Taggart, who now has 12 goals for the campaign. Meanwhile, Newcastle arrived in Perth without a win in six matches and now sat just a point ahead of bottom side Western United. Grace Gill and Robbie Feldman are your match commentators for this one. Equalina. Super save from Ollie Sale. That might have just been creeping in on his right hand side. Cross comes in. Stamatolopoulos rose well. Chance still on. Clint Taylor scores. And the shed falls silent. A fifth goal for the season for Clayton Taylor. Yeah. Gives it away. Chance it for the glory. Kolkowski lays it back. Ball's in the back of the net. The flag is up. Kolkowski had drifted into an offside position on that through ball. Grozos Piscopo. Between the lines, early ball in, Stamatolopoulos, Sale comes up big again. Moragas on the follow-up, goes in the back of the net. And the Jets double their lead. He's been a constant threat all night, Lucas Moragas. And he gets himself a second goal of the season at HBF. No, things can change very quickly. As Grozov swings in the corner, Kankar, what a touch. That would have been one of the goals of the season from the big defender. Williams early ball forward for Taggart. Brings it under beautifully! What a finish by the Glory captain! The Shed comes to life and the Glory are alive in this game. 2-1. To level pegging, free kick. Rawlins leaves it to the back post. Kaelin Majakadami off the bench. But referee Lachlan Keevers has the VAR in his ear. The goal was ruled out for Anasmo, blocking Stamatolopoulos. There you see, right on the edge of the box. Corner swung in by Colley. To the back post! A captain's knock from Adam Taggart 
Another goal for the Glory Skipper. And we are back at 2-2. Well, history repeats itself at HBF Park. Katrumbus might be onside here. Williams! <laughs> Off the crossbar and out for a goal kick. Adam Taggart's double securing a valuable point for Perth, who now sits seven points outside the finals positions with seven games left in the season. Sunday saw Central Coast Mariners head to Sydney South West to take on MacArthur FC. With Wellington losing against Melbourne City, the Mariners knew a win here over the Bulls would see them finish the round on top of the ladder. However, Mark Jackson's side did play in midweek against Indian side Odisha FC in the AFC Cup. As for MacArthur, Mile Stojovski's team have won two of their last three home games in the league, while a win over the Mariners would also see them return to third spot on the ladder. Your commentators for this one are Andy Harper and Ben Homer. Blow up after the AFC Cup, Macau Docker shifts it into Nisbet. Josh Nisbet has done it again. It's a carbon copy of last week against Newcastle. He's got two in two A-League matches, and the Mariners, they lead one nil again. They've got some tall men, the Mariners defensively. You saw Ryan Edmondson there. Jamar getting up. He could not have asked for a better kind of situation there. Just wonder whether he was making out as if the sun was in his eyes. Davila turning. Not winning the free kick. Nisbet has time. Barcelos makes it 2-0 for the Mariners. Well, he scored the match winner here in the AFC Cup. He loves Campbelltown Stadium. He's got his first A-League goal here as well. And it's 2-0 to the Coasties. But it's Josh Nisbet again, just calmly rolling the ball through, through the legs of Matt German. And it's 2-0 for the Mariners, easy as you like. Ballard, thumping this ball deep, and now it sits for Torres, appeals for handball, but it, well it's a penalty, I thought he was outside the box Matt Yerman, and that is what he's saying to Daniel Elder, he's gone in for a yellow card, make of that what you will, and Hell Torres is not going to be concerned about that. Philip Curto saves for the Bulls, and justice may well be done here at Campbelltown Stadium. The Bulls fans will certainly feel like it has been. Look at the strength of Brian Kaltak down by the corner flag. But Adamson pitches it back for the Bulls. And the Mariners away through Nisbet. And off goes Mikhail Docker. Nisbet towering through the middle. Docker finds Edmondson, he's got his first in the A-League. Ryan Edmondson, the English striker, who arrived in January, he's arrived on the score sheet in the A-League. In one sweeping movement, beautiful stuff. And El Torres in behind. Torres to make it for Curto again. If not for Philip Curto, this scoreline could be even uglier. Here come the Mariners, just relentless. Torres this time. Couldn't pick out the top corner. You know, that there really, it's, this, this momentum is incredible. It's fascinating to watch. A statement win for the Mariners as Mark Jackson's side ensured they'd sit on top of the ladder come the end of the round. And the final game of round 20 saw Sydney FC welcome Brisbane Raw to Allianz Stadium. The Sky Blues are currently undefeated in their last seven matches and head into round 20 knowing a win over the Raw would see them finish the round in fourth and one point behind Melbourne victory in third. Meanwhile, Ruben Zadkovic's side arrived in Sydney having lost five of their last six matches outside Queensland. However, a win would move them level on points with the Wanderers in sixth well and truly in the mix for a finals position with six games left in the season. Your match commentators at Allianz Stadium are Daniel McBreen and Simon Hill. No way out at the moment for Brisbane. Now they can get clear and there's a break on. And it's Marco Rojas leading the charge one-on-one -on -one with Andrew Redmayne. And the pink wiggle stacks tall and 
makes the block, but again, Sydney FC called short defensively. You just wonder how many chances Brisbane are going to get. Again, they've won the ball high up the park and they get a free kick. And a yellow card for Jake Girdwood Reich. It's not clever, is it? That's a bad one. Yeah, this is going to be overturned. Oh, dear, oh dear. Yeah, he's off. Yellow card cancelled. Sydney FC down to 10. And a week that began so well for Jake Goodwin Reich with Holly Roos selection has ended in his dismissal. Right, the Brisbane Royal defence parted like the Red Sea. Or the Orange Sea. Here's a chance for Gomez off the crossbar. Two chances inside 60 seconds for the home side. Kind of delivery Gomez would be asking for. It's a wonderful head up. We could only stand and watch as it cannon back off the, the post. Well, the possession stats are always going to favour Brisbane with the extra man. Sydney have created a couple of good chances. Another one brewing here. Courtney Perkins. spin as well to favour Ryan Grant Lolly slightly off balance will it fall for Caceres perhaps no Courtney Perkins wins the ball back for Sydney Ryan Grant chance here run the back Sydney hit the front three goals in four games for the Slovakia who started to hit his straps at the right time of the season and the 10th man have the lead Brisbane looking for an immediate response. Rojas has to turn back out. Held up by Corey Brown and uh, oh, I think that might have just glanced off the goal from Jess Lofthaus. Got up well, yep. I don't know if Redmayne was going to get there if that was the other side. I on my jock and Jonas Markovsky standing by. Two attacking talents who've done well off the bench for Ruben Zankovic in the last few weeks. Fresh legs as well, just to start running at defences, particularly with Majok. I'm sure the remit for Markovsky will be get yourself in and around that box. Which is what they're trying to do here. Corey Brown's delivery, Henry Hoare, 1 1. Very tidy finish by Henry Hoare, who has his first goal for Brisbane since November of last year. And the Sky Blues lead was short-lived. Looking to provide some kind of spark to break the deadlock. Jelicic, Lofthouse, chance Markovsky, and Andrew Redmayne to the rescue for Sydney. And then Markovsky just leaving that boot in a fraction too long but they fashioned that opportunity really well, Brisbane. So, honours even at Allianz Stadium as Sydney FC now sit five points clear inside the finals positions, while Brisbane are now just two points outside the top six. That's all for this week on the Isuzu Ute A-League Highlight Show. We'll see you next time.